Spider-Man Far From Home has officially hit theaters, which means it's time to rank all the Spider-Man movies from the worst to the best. Last place at number nine, Spider-Man 3. My complaints about this movie are probably your complaints about this movie. Too many characters, too many plot lines, and overall it's just horribly written. It's awkward and cringeworthy to watch. They retconned who Uncle Ben's killer was for absolutely no reason. It's just a mess. Now on top of that, they ruined Venom, one of the coolest Spider-Man villains, by having to be played by Topher Grace. What were they thinking? With no less than three dance scenes, yes, there's three, I'm pretty sure this inspired the Spider-Man Broadway show. This is a movie that I hate having to watch whenever a new Spider-Man comes out, but at least it's extremely easy to make fun of, so that helps with its painfulness a bit. Number 8, Amazing Spider-Man 2. This has many of the same problems that Spider-Man 3 has, mainly too many villains, because at the time they were trying to set up a Sinister Six spinoff film, so it focused more on that than it did the actual story they were trying to tell in this film. Jamie Foxx was not a good fit for Electro, nor was Paul Giamatti a good choice for the Rhino. Skipping Norman Osborn to go straight to Harry as the Goblin was an interesting choice that I actually thought worked pretty well, but I am not a fan of the design for him. Number 7, Amazing Spider-Man. An unnecessary reboot that was only made so Sony could keep the rights to Spider-Man from Marvel. In the cancelled Spider-Man 4, the villain was supposed to be the Lizard, who is the villain in this film. So I think what they did was they just took what they had of Spider-Man 4 and reworked it to be an origin story, and you can tell. Andrew Garfield is not as good as Tobey Maguire because he seems a bit too confident, which is not who Peter Parker is when he's first starting out with Spider-Man, and he feels a bit too much like a Marty Stew. That being said, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone have much better chemistry in this film than Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst. Maguire and Dunst are just awkward to watch and a facepalm with every romance scene they're in. Garfield and Stone, however, are extremely cute together. Number 6, Spider-Man. I know this is going to be controversial, but it's not higher on the list, because a lot of people, myself included, who grew up with this film, and for them, this was their Spider-Man. Now, this film is still very good, but it's also very dated. It feels a bit too cartoony. The main reason is the way they wrote Green Goblin. When he's not wearing his costume, he's very scary, but when he is in the costume, he just looks ridiculous. I do enjoy how this chose to go with the origin story from the Ultimate Spider-Man comics as opposed to the original comics, which was a great choice because that one works a bit better cinematically. This also does a great job of setting up the friendship between Harry and Peter that will ultimately get destroyed by the end of the next film. This laid the groundwork that other Spider-Man films, with some exceptions, later perfected, and I also consider this laying the groundwork for just the modern superhero movie in general. It's because of this film that we now have films like Iron Man and others. Number 5, Venom. I know this is not technically a Spider-Man film, since Spider-Man is not in it, nor is he even mentioned, but because Venom is such an iconic Spider-Man villain, and because of how they fixed Venom after screwing him up so badly in Spider-Man 3, I feel this needs to be on the list. The main issue with this film is the tone inconsistencies. The first half is presented more like a horror film, but then the second half is presented more like an action buddy comedy. The director was originally shooting for an R rating when this was first announced, but Sony demanded it be cut down to a PG-13 because they wanted the possibility of working on a deal with Marvel in the future of having Spider-Man show up in later films. And it kind of shows because a lot of the gory violence in this film is implied or off-screen. But it's still a very fun movie, even if some of the dialogue sounds like it was written by a kid playing with his action figures. Number 4, Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man's first MCU film where he gets to play in the sandbox of the Avengers characters. Tom Holland is perfect as Spider-Man, with his awkwardness and quips and just the general fanboyness. Michael Keaton is really creepy as the Vulture, and this is everything an MCU Spider-Man film should be. Number 3, Spider-Man Far From Home. This did a great job of connecting the ending of Avengers Endgame to this film, and the world is trying to get back to normal. Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome as Mysterio and has a lot of fun with his performance, and when the actor is fun, the audience has fun. This is also one of the funniest MCU films and has a lot of really good plot twists and a cameo that will blow your mind. I'm very excited to see what the MCU has next. Number 2, Spider-Man 2. Out of the original Sam Raimi films, this has the best plot, the best character development, and the best villain. It also sets up Spider-Man 3 perfectly and made me very excited for Spider-Man 3, so it's a shame that that film was so bad. Peter Parker matures more as a character, his friendship with Harry gets ruined. This is the Empire Strikes Back of the original three Raimi films in terms of stakes and character development. But the number one Spider-Man film is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This is one of the best animated films ever, and the best Spider-Man film of all time. This beat Disney at the Oscars after they had a monopoly on the best animated film category for so long, so you know they did something right with this film. The animation is incredibly unique, 
has a lot of great humor, a lot of heart, and a great story. Every spider hero has their own unique animation style, whether it be Penny Parker has an anime style, Spider Ham has a Looney Tune style, or Miles Morales has a hyper realistic comic book style, and they all blend seamlessly. This is an amazing Spider Man film, no pun intended, and is number one on this list. So what's your list? What's your favorite Spider-Man movie? What's your least favorite? Are you mad that I put Venom on the list? Are you mad that I put a certain movie so high? Let me know in the comments below.